Hello everybody, you are watching Rapid Phantom JS section 3.1, which will give you a quick introduction to the tools that are available to automate your new Phantom JS scripts. In the last two sections, we basically covered a lot of Phantom JS functionality, going from rendering and automation to testing. And now we will discover the final aspect of this course. How will this fit into our workflow? When dealing with PhantomJS scripts, it is especially important that one is able to execute them easily and in the best case scenario automatically. Having this functionality means no one has to remember specific commands and or care about these commands. So let's have a look at what we will cover in this section. This section includes three videos. The video you're watching now, the first one, is just about showing and explaining what these tools are and what advantages they provide. In the two videos that will follow, we will discover the tools in detail and will set up the automation process from scratch. In the video number two, we will have a look at the tools make and npm scripts. And in video number three, we will have a look at the front end JavaScript build tools Grunt and Gulp, which have become industry standard lately. So what is Make? Make is definitely the oldest software that we will cover in this course. It was invented in 1976 and is widely supported in all Unix environments. This means when you're on a Linux machine like Ubuntu or on a Mac, you will be fine. If you're in front of a Windows machine, you have to install it first. And there are plenty of instruction guides available on the internet. What all of the tools covered in this course have in common is that they have one command that will deal with PhantomJS execution. We don't have to remember anything about location and system arguments. These tools will help us in case we forgot how to deal with our scripts. So let me just show you how this will work. All we have to do is navigate to our directory and type in make into the command line. What we see now is the execution of a script that we developed in section 2, which takes screenshots of the packed publishing website. This command is defined inside of the make file which is the configuration file for make and has to be located inside of the directory where you want to execute make. We will have a detailed look at the make file in the next video. The main advantage of these kind of tools is that they are easy to remember and more importantly, easier to share with coworkers and other maintainers of your project. This gives you the ability to standardize across projects to a single command for test execution, for example. Another option could be the usage of npm scripts. We already mentioned Node.js and its package manager npm in section 1. As a quick reminder, Node.js is a platform that lets you execute JavaScript on the server side, which brings the advantage, especially when you're dealing with web development, that you can write application, testing and automation code in the same language. Node.js and its ship package manager npm have become very popular over the last few years, so you might not want to include another dependency like make in your process. A notable thing about npm is that it not only runs on every platform, but its functionality isn't limited to package installation processes only. You can also use it to execute any commands, including the execution of our PhantomJS scripts. So let's have a quick look. I'm executing the command npm test and the same script will be executed as before using the make command. What's nice about this is that it is a convention for Node projects to include this command. So if you're developing a project that is based on Node.js, you may feel familiar to execute a test read using the npm test command. We will now have a look at two new popular build tools written in Node.js. Grunt and Gulp are build tools that have plugins to accomplish many common tasks. For instance, we can run unit tests, concatenate and minify files, and prepare a project for deployment according to best practices. With Grunt and Gulp, we'll be able to add automation to our project, so that we can run our PhantomJS scripts with a single command, or even as a hook with our source control system. So let's just have a quick look at the plugin pages of these two tools. The Grunt plugin page is located at gruntjs.com slash plugins and the Gulp plugin page is at gulpjs.com slash plugins. Both tools provide a really rich plugin range, so you will find a plugin that fits your needs quickly. Additionally, these two tools come with a so-called file watcher that will automatically run the scripts you like whenever you change a file included in the project. We will have a look at this in more detail in the video about Grunt and Gulp. Watch can be extremely useful for noticing breaking changes on the unit test read. For example, a use case can be when making changes to a JavaScript code base to run the unit test read right after each file change. Just to show you what the output of Grunt and Gulp looks like, let's kick it off on the command line. So let's now execute our PhantomJS scripts using Grunt 
And now we are doing the same using Gulp. And this is it for now. We covered four main build and automation tools and hopefully you are already curious about them. They all provide useful functionality for automation. Over and above that, Grunt and Gulp provide a huge ecosystem to automate common tasks quickly. All things considered, you have to decide by yourself which tool fits best with your project. In the next video, we will develop the execution of our PhantomJS scripts via Make and NPM scripts. So see you next time.